Well, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez claiming that racketeer influence and corrupt organizations, that's also known as RICO, is not a crime. This coming during a very heated exchange in a hearing yesterday with Tony Bobolinsky. He's a witness in the Biden impeachment inquiry, testified yesterday. The Internet lighting up with mockery of the far-left Democrat. And here with us now is Fox News contributor Sol Weisenberg. He's a former deputy independent counsel, and it's great to have you here. Just so everyone knows what we're talking about, let's play it in case they missed it. What is, Our, uh, what is the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, uh, wait, you, keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. Rico, you're obviously not familiar with. Corruption Excuse statute. me, sir. Excuse Our, me, sir. Excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What I is the it's a category crime? of crimes? I wonder if it makes a difference if you enunciate every syllable of the word category to make a difference here, Saul. But in all seriousness, tell us, what is RICO? RICO is a crime. It's a federal statute, 18 United States Code, Section 1962. Furthermore, it has a subsection D that includes conspiracy to commit that crime. Uh, Bobolinsky said, uh, mentioned both RICO and conspiracy. There are many federal statutes that cover conspiracy, the most important one, 18 U.S.C. 371. So it's nice to know what you're talking about before you try to bully, uh, bully a witness. But he was a very, very uniquely powerful witness mm -hmm. that they really don't have any dirt against, so they needed to do everything possible to divert attention from what he was saying. He was very prepared, and I think he had also, you know, had it up to here with uh, being this target and feeling like nothing ever goes forward, and he has been accused of being a liar and more. Uh, it's also interesting that AOC wouldn't understand RICO, given that President Trump and many of the people that worked with him are under investigation or indictment for RICO in Georgia. Right. The Georgia statute is... Uh, is different than the federal one, but it's still, it's still called RICO and it's still a crime. And he was very, as you point out, he had been waiting to testify for a long time. His testimony was raw, emotional. To me, it made it, it, made it more powerful. Again, unlike many of the people who have testified, he, he faces no, uh, he's, he's not in prison. He hasn't been convicted and out of prison. People who are talking about Hunter Biden and so, uh, and he's a, a, a hero uh, mm -hmm. and, and has served his country honorably, so he cannot, he, he cannot be attacked on substance, and so they have to divert attention like, like they did. Well, I just wanted to ask you about this because we've been watching this back and forth between former President Trump and the New York Attorney General, Letitia James. So she came out again yesterday saying that the former president must post a bond that fully covers the $454 million judgment that she is very proud to have gotten against him. Here is President Trump's attorney, Alina Haba, on Martha's show yesterday. Our argument in front of the appellate division is that forcing him to sell prized properties such as Trump Tower, iconic properties like 40 Wall Street, to pursue his appeal is manifest injustice, and it deprives him of that due process that we are all entitled to. So imagine you can't reverse selling off Trump Tower on a fire sale at a discounted price. We can't fix that if we win on an appeal. So it's complete injustice. And President Trump's message in a fundraising appeal was keep your filthy hands off of Trump Tower. How do you think this is going to get resolved? I, I don't really know. I know that he's going to the Court of Appeals and he's asking for them either, either to halt the judgment pending his appeal uh, or to reduce the bond amount to $100 million. If he loses there, uh, he, he can try New York State's highest court. I think it's going to be very difficult for him. I think it's very unfair uh, the way the law is, is set up. But it's going to be very difficult to overturn the trial judge, Engeron's, his specific factual findings about whether or not there, were, there was fraudulent inf inflation of the financial statements. But it's, it's, it's very unfair. You know, New York State Constitution allows for a right to trial by jury. I'm going to get law nerdy for you. Uh, Go for you it. Know, I love a, it. For just a minute. Well, in 2011, a uh, state court said you don't need this, this special law, this special fraud law, executive law that they use to go after President Trump. 
uh, does not require a jury. Well, New York state constitution has a right to trial by jury. And there's a legal opinion in 2011 and says, well, it doesn't really apply to this law. You don't have to have that with this law because this is an equitable law, right? This is a law we use to say, to tell people, stop doing this, to issue an injunction. And the court said, any monetary, any monetary uh, relief under this law is going to be minimal. Well, that's not what happened here. Mm -hmm. As we know, there's a $455 million uh, judgment against Trump. And so I think his argument is going to be that this is a, this is a constitutional problem under New York law and perhaps under, under federal law. And, and so it's unfair that he's got to basically post the, the entire amount uh, in order to have an appeal. Doesn't mean that it's lawless that he has to. Anybody in this situation would, would face this. It's just uh, not, not a fair situation. Uh, if, you, if, a, if an error has been made at the trial court, should you have to pay the entire judgment while you're pursuing an appeal? I think it's a valid point he's got. Thank you. I love when you get nerdy on us in the law because I didn't go to law school, but I love learning from smart lawyers like you. Thank you, Saul. Great to have you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.